What's up guys, it's your boy Jay from JS Films and today I'm going to be giving you my final thoughts on the Ursa Mini 4K. Now I waited two and a half months to do this review so that I can actually use the camera first before giving it to you. So right now we're just going to go ahead and do some pros and cons of the camera after using it for two and a half months. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I have some notes here so I'm sorry if I'm looking down a lot again. Absolute thing that I like about this camera is the full 4K RAW capability. It can shoot up to 60 frames per second at full 4K RAW. There are no other cameras out there that can shoot 4K at RAW at 60 frames per second for $3,000. If there is, let me know. Second thing I like about this camera is the LCD and the menu. Because the menu is so simple, it only took me a week to actually memorize all the options. There's actually not a menu within a menu within the menu. It's not like a menu section, so it's actually easy to learn. Um, like I said, it took me one week to actually learn where everything is, and after that, that's it. But then again, that's for all the Blackmagic cameras. They have really simple menus. Third thing I like about it is the 1080p at 120 frames per second. I know it's just ProRes right now, but maybe in future firmware, so let me shoot RAW with it at 1080p at 120 frames per second, but ProRes HQ is really not that bad, so I really like that uh, feature in this camera. All right, next thing I like about the camera is the focus peaking, the actual built-in LCD focus peaking. I really like it because A, I don't have to get another camera that has focus peaking because the focus peaking in this built-in LCD monitor is actually perfect. It works perfect, so. So the next thing I like about this camera is having two CFAS 2.0 card slots in it. I don't have to carry a lot of memory cards with me because I have two in there and I can just leave it there and I don't have to worry about it at all. So yeah, I love that feature. Next thing I like about the camera is being able to set it up pretty quickly. When we went to Paris and we shot those videos, we didn't really have a lot of time because we were getting stopped by the cops because our camera looked professional so we had to actually be quick about it so basically I had the camera in the backpack and I would just take it out of the backpack take the lens cap off open the LCD screen uh, put the v-mount battery on turn the power on set aperture set focus and record that easy I don't have to fiddle with any other settings so setting it up is actually pretty easy the next thing I like about this camera is global shutter. Global shutter is amazing. I've never had any cameras with global shutter before, but after using this camera with global shutter, I just don't want to ever get a camera without it anymore. Honestly, the audio in the Ursa Mini 4K is pretty darn good. I'm actually using it right now, built-in audio. So for me, and for YouTube, it's perfect. I mean, obviously, if you're making movies for, you know, like legit movies, you might have issues with it. But for YouTube, I think it works perfectly. So audio is definitely really cool in the Ursa Mini 4K. All right, so now for the bad stuff, the cons for this camera. I know it's called Ursa Mini, but it's really not that many. It's still ginormous. It's huge. It's heavy. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to get this camera or you're looking into buying it. Um, second thing I don't like about it is when you underexpose something, you can actually see some horizontal or vertical lines in your footage. I don't like it, but at the same time, it's probably my fault because I underexpose it. But I only see it in underexposed videos. Other than that, it it's pretty clean unless your copy is horrible, but mine's not that bad. So the next thing I don't like about this camera is the LCD flip out screen. It only rotates to 90 degrees and not 180. That's such a bummer because we were in Paris. I wanted to take selfies, but I couldn't because I couldn't see myself. So maybe in the future, Black Magic, please make it 180 degrees. Next thing I don't like about this camera is the XLR ports are really hard. They're just very hard and I'll show you. Basically, it's really hard to get your XLR cables out of the XLR ports. It's a pain. It feels like I'm breaking it every time I pull it out. Just be careful. Last thing I don't like about this camera is stabilizing it. It's impossible to stabilize this camera because it's so heavy. If you're trying to stabilize this camera, you're probably going to get a vest system. Or if you want, you can get it with the Ronin, the actual DJI Ronin, not the Ronin M, but the DJI Ronin, maybe it'll work with that. So that is all what I have for you guys today. And hopefully that helped or did not help purchasing this camera. But if you have any questions, let me know. I think overall this camera cannot be beat at $3,000. At 2995, it shoots 4K, RAW, RAW 3 to 1, shoots ProRes, it shoots 60 frames per second, 120p, it has like 12 stops of dynamic range, it has built-in LCD, it's 
It's such a great camera and it's definitely worth looking at. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, like I said, let me know.